to support like I said, it's the same support. So if we have a multi-mural model, we will use both. What, what do you mean by both? Sh uh, the shape and shape model. Yeah, shape model is part of the shape. Okay, no. so in this, yeah. So it's the same, the same support. Okay, so, so we have a few talks, several talks on the binary theory, then we have coffee, then one hour discussion when we solve the physics. Hello everybody, can you hear me at the end of the room? Yes, okay. So, my name is Martin Wajde. Uh, for those of you who don't remember or remember me, I have a picture. Ah, there we go. So that's me, and this, you know, you can identify me really clearly with the shiny cast. And then I'm going to be talking about, as, as this really pretty uh, simulation is showing uh, about the formation of a question disk, for you seeing here uh, velocity lines that are going to be telling us about the structure of these disks. This is working collaboration with the, the University of Rochester group, Adam, uh, Jason, and, and Eric who are here. And so the outline, the outline of my talk is, is very simple. I'm going to do a very brief introduction, and I'm going to tell you about a few models. I'm sorry if I don't mention yours. It's just about because of time constraints. Then I'm going to tell you about our model, the conditions and results, and then some final comments. Okay, so this is the system we want to study. We have two stars. One of them is an asymptotic giant branch, and it's going to be emitting a wind in all directions. And we're going to have a smaller companion. Now what I'm showing you this finally is the flow structure, so you can see how lines are going to get are going to be pulled towards the, the equation line, to, sorry, sorry, towards the secondary, and then the lines are going to be coming here, and eventually they're going to meet at the stagnation point. That's where the, the, the flow is going to get to the minimum velocity. From that point on, some material is going to go towards the, the secondary, and some material is going to go away from it. Now this is the symbol on the whole picture as an as an I'm going to tell you in a moment that's not the case in our, in our simulations because we are, we are rotating. We have to account for the motion of the stars. Okay, now as, as for the, the gravitational configuration of the system, we have the two stars and we have these five divergent points and the system we're studying are uh, binaries in which we are away from the Roche surface, so there's not going to be any overflow. Now for the physics, this is a uh, uh, very interesting paper by Noah, and he puts together the, the basic ingredients you need to form a disk. So basically you need to have the ratio of uh, specific angular momenta of the accretive material and also of the material that is uh, orbiting. You need to have the separation. The separation is key for this process, the separation of the stars. Then also the, the relative velocity between the wind and the orbital velocity of the accreting star. So those are the basic ingredients you need. Now, the, there's uh, not too many numerical studies, and um, the, the questions we, we it's, it's an old problem, and some of the interesting questions that we are still to follow or to find <coughs> answers for are, you know, what was the accretion limit if we keep separating the stars, and also if, what kind of accretion we're going to get with respect to the bonding coil. And this is because the bonding coil we know really well well characterized, so if we can compare against it, then we will know something concrete. What I'm showing you here is the, the bonding radius, and this just literally means it's the surface where the secondary dominates the gravitational uh, uh, field of the flow. I'm going to tell you about two models, uh, numerical models, just because they are very relevant and very interesting. So this is one of them. This was a 3D study in SPH. And then here you have the star. This is the simulation was centered in the center of mass, so they follow the stars rotating. Here is the HV that is launching this wind in every direction. Here is the equator. You can see the accretion this forming and this spiral. This spiral is produced by the secondary. We saw in the morning very pretty uh, simulations that also show that. And so these guys found that they, they, they found stable disks and that they were some there was some susceptibility to these warping stabilities that I was asking about earlier in the morning. But this was a very interesting, very complete study, and they put in also uh, quite a bit of effort in following the dust component of the HB wind. Now, this is another study, this is more recent, this is a jump of about uh, 
11 years, this is a 2D study. Now we're sitting on the primary, we're, the, we're not seeing the stars from, with respect to the center of mass in this case. And then these guys also inspected what happened if you were changing uh, the separation between the stars. And so, just to give you an example of, of what the explorer here you see in orbit, so this is after one orbit, after two, after three, etc. And each column is going to represent a different separation, 10, 20, 30, 40 astronomical units. And as you can see, the, the effect on the disk is very, very big. But especially what they're doing, they are increasing the area of acceleration of the wind. And this is, this is very important because their observations show that the wind has uh, uh, an acceleration uh, mechanism for, um, which is more relevant within the, the uh, range of the 10 astronomical units. Okay, so now I'm going to tell you our model. Uh, this, is, this was published recently in the my monthly notices. The code we use is Astrover, so don't miss Alan's talk, two after mine. He's going to be talking about the code extensively. And uh, so this is our model. So the, the AX star is far out of our grid. Our grid is going to rotate so in a rotating frame with secondary. And so in this, in all the phases that have an arrow pointing in, we're putting the wind conditions. And the rest of the faces, the wind comes out of the box. So basically, we're simulating how, as we move, we're capturing or we're seeing all the wind that is around. And the secondary is in the center, is going to be pulling the material. So we're going to be able to follow how this is being uh, formed. We're going to have a, a circular orbit, and we have a nested grid in this case to capture uh, the strongest, uh, the fastest orbits in the center. As for uh, uh, the conditions that uh, we have a primary with uh, 1.5 solar masses, the second type has one solar mass, and we explore these three separations, and we found very interesting uh, results, which I'm going to disclose or tell you about right now. So what I'm going to show you now is, is a couple of, of simulations, sorry, a couple of movies. Here you're going to see the orbital plane, so you're seeing the stars rotating this way, and then this is a transversal plane. The stars are going to be going towards you. And you're going to see the center is right there, there's the secondary. Here you can see the wind entering, this is the initial condition. You can see that those little arrows represent the velocity, and you can see how the wind is it's going. Now, this is, I'm supposed to click. There we go. Okay. Thank you. So now you can see the information of the disk. Something very interesting that you could not see with the SDH is the shot. Here we can see this big shot that is it's forming as the disk is moving around. Here we can see the, 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 the structure of the disk. I'm going to show you a, a different plot in a minute. We can see the, the structure of the velocity field. We can see the, the size of the disk. This is the timing orbits. These are orbits uh, in the, uh, of the binary, not of the inter internal field. Now, let me click again on this. So this is the same uh, movie, but I'm showing you zoom versions here of the same process. So you can see a better have a better view. So this is just getting in. Look at those strange wheels we, we found and you can see the velocity, how it's going towards the fleeting particle. You can see the disk forming, you can see how it's supersonic, it's very close to the aquarium. That, that's it. Thank you. Okay, so now this is a steady plot of this situation. So in colors I'm showing you different densities. So black, sorry, red is denser than black, blue no, the other way around. Black is denser than red, red is denser than blue. So as you're going out, the, the density is decreasing, that's why I'm showing you here. Now the different lines, either if you have uh, dots or continuous lines, they're going to tell you about time. So what you can see is we have three lines here and they are very similar. That means that the disk, the disk once it forms, then it doesn't change too much in, in structure. Only the initial part, which is this, is going to be different, but once the disk is formed, it maintains its structure. Now, on this other side, I'm showing you a lateral view of the, of the disk. This is a comparison between the 15 and the 20. Uh, here, I'm showing you the wind. This is this arrow is showing you the direction of the wind. You can see that in this case, this tail and the angle between this tail and this arrow is, is almost zero. This is when we are going to recover the bond hole because we're going far away from the primary, but if you get closer, then the tail is going to go away. So the condition of the bond is going to work when the separation is large. Okay. 
Uh, this is a more interesting plot. This is what Alan was asking about earlier. So we, we can plot the accretion rate of these disks, and here, here they are, and we're comparing with the uh, bonding coil. This means bonding coil, not black hole. <laughs> and we can see that we are uh, within the limit. Uh, we are close or comparable to what we were expecting. You can ask me about that if you want to. Also, um, here, this is something very interesting. We found that the, the structure of the accreted material, we were expecting it to be a column of matter going towards the, the star. But instead, instead we found this uh, vortex tube-like structure. So here you can see the wall of our simulation and the wind coming in with, with its normal condition and then it's trapped. Here you can see where the lines change color, that's going to be the, the binding coil uh, uh, radius. And then you see how material just, you know, goes around, gets to the stagnation point, and some of the material leaves the area, and the other part of the material goes, is captured, and forms a disk. Okay, now um, another very interesting thing we found, and this is going back again to bonded oil, is that we have to take into account that the secondary, that there's a differential acceleration involved in the system. So, it's not that the gas, so what I'm showing you here is the wind is coming in this direction. Now this is where the star, the secondary was, when the wind was coming in. Then the material is going to be pulled to the stagnation region, so it's going to meet right there. The velocity is going to be minimized, and then some of the material is going to go back uh, away, and some of the material is going to go to the star. But the star is not going to be longer there, the star is moving, it's being pulled by the primary. So really the material is going to be attracted to this retarded position. And so this is also related to this publication that was accepted a few months ago. And uh, there we do uh, all the analytics on how this, this modification to the bonding coil uh, uh, formalism comes into play in, in our system. And, and this is something we found that's very interesting is that you need to resolve this B, this impact parameter, this is parameter, you need to be able to resolve that with your simulation. So you have to have enough cells to see that, otherwise you won't see the formation of the disk. Okay, so just my conclusions. Uh, this is basically a summary. So we saw uh, that the, the structure of the disk is a function of uh, the distance, a function of the separation of, of, the, of the stars. We saw this is forming up to 20 uh, astronomical units in three, full 3D. Three uh, the, the material in the orbits is a function of A. I think I must have deleted a mobile I was planning to show. Okay, I'm sorry for coming this but yeah, totally lost a movie that I was going to show you, but well this this plot shows that. So here you're seeing in black, you can see the disk that is at 10 astronomical units from the primary. In red, you're seeing that that is 20 astronomical units. So the shape of the orbits depends on, on the oh my God, I'm sorry. Uh, depends on, on the separation. I talked to you about the impact parameter, and well, finally the energetics suggests that if you're going to launch a model, uh, a jet, I'm sorry, it's in the, uh, for a, a pre-prime time nebula case then you need to have a secondary which is a, a white one so that you can really account for the for the attrition rate in the in the jet. Thank you. Okay. Uh, in, in, in my uh, list of comments to speakers, your last slide better be your summary, not thank you. But many people say you look when we thank each other, it's very nice. But I think the sound of this, this should be the last, so we have time to read and find all the mistakes. Yes. <laughs> nice talk. Thank you. Could you tell me what determines the thickness of the, of, of the disk? Is, it, is, it, is the thickness determined by the thermal energy used or by the entropy of the base of the, of the outflow? What, what, yeah, basically. What, what is the thickness of the disk determined by the disk? Um, well, it's a, it's, a, it's a good question. I think it's just, it's gravity. I would say the gravitational influence of the, 
secondary is going to dominate what's happening there more than, than heat. So for this simulation, for when I showed the initial transitions, we were using an isothermal equation of state. Um, but, so, what we found as we were separating the stars was that the disk was getting thinner and thinner. So, what was changing in that case was, we were changing the angular momentum of the system. So, I guess it's a combination of, of the angular momentum, total angular momentum of the system, and the relative velocity of, of, the, of the wind and the, the orbit of the secondary. Well, the sound, the sound speed is also... The 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 speed. Speed. So For the thickness? Yeah, sound speed. Of the, of the gas. Because, yeah, the, the dominant... The, only, the gravitational force is primarily radio, so, you know, the, the, the thickness is going to be determined mostly, I think, by the sound speed. By the sound speed of the disk material. Yeah, I mean... To, if you have an adi adiabatic thing, you, you can sometimes not even form with this. So right. You, have, you need some kind of cooling. Cooling, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm a little bit puzzled by your very last line there. It says, you're quoting a mass of say, of 5 times 10 minus 4 solar masses per year and post to the checks. I don't think this applies in general. It may apply to a few extreme objects. I'm not hearing your answer. So. You're saying that your energetic argument is based on the fact that you're estimating jet mass losses of 5 times 10 to the minus 4 solar masses per year, based on that reference. I think that number is way too high except for the extreme objects. In most big bang the mass loss rates are two orders of magnitude lower in the jets. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we should not... I mean, this is like an AGB mass loss, wind mass loss rate. This is not a post AGB jet mass loss rate. I mean, the, this is not the, well, this is the, this would be one estimate for the accretion rate, not the mass loss rate, but the accretion rate. Right, the that's what rate. we're seeing towards the yeah. So it's, it's like, yeah, this, for, for this, the highest power of your objects, this number, I, I think, is coming from the, you know, the accretion rates that you would need, and what you're saying, basically, is that the accretion rates you're getting are, or, I mean, the main point is that the accretion rates from the VHL are two orders of magnitude below what that sample mm -hmm. would require. Yes. Yeah, so that, that's basically the point. For the, P, for the PME, not a prop, you know, there's, this is not as much of a problem, but for the PPME, it, you know, that's the thing. So that really, I think, for the accretion rates. Uh, actually, I'll be talking about a bit more about that in my own talks. Okay. Okay, so let, let's <laughs> the next talk.